Hey, Facebook fans, another round of ATP. Today's question is, Pastor Sullivan, in our society, abortion has become a terrible sin. Knowing these children are never afforded the opportunity to be baptized, how are we to view the spiritual state of these children from God's word? You make a very good point. Abortion has just become an epidemic in our society uh, in which babies are denied the first birth uh, and thereby also then denied the second birth of faith in Christ through water and the Spirit, John chapter 3. This also then, um, and not, not, not just to harp on abortion, although that is, although that is a great wickedness, uh, also here at work in the background is a question for uh, parents who lose children in the womb uh, due to miscarriage, due to uh, being born, stillborn, things of this nature. So what we're asking today is, what does the scripture say about their salvation? I mean, I want to make a couple of points. The first point is, God only saves people through faith in Christ. The end, no one is saved or justified of their sins apart from faith in Christ. Uh, babies, like adults, need the forgiveness of sins because babies, like adults, bear the guilt of Adam. Go back and watch the ATP on original sin and why babies need baptism in the first place. Uh, the Lord doesn't have a different schematic for saving babies or the elderly or the mentally retarded or Dallas Cowboys fans, or you, know, you, you get the picture. There's there's one way of salvation. God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth, Paul tells Timothy. And the truth is, of course, Jesus Christ. So God wants all men to be saved, but only by faith in Christ. So that's the first point we have to maintain. Uh, point number two is, thank God that babies can believe uh, and receive the forgiveness of sins. Uh, now, I know there's a lot of folks like you out there of the Reformed bent who are going to say, well, babies can't believe because faith is a uh, decision of the heart and an act of volition and the will and all this. <coughs> you still haven't proven that from Scripture, by the way. Babies can believe in the womb. And the chief example of this is St. John the Baptist. Uh, his, uh, when Mary, when Jesus in her room, goes to visit older cousin Elizabeth with John the Baptist in her room, John the Baptist is already doing his office and uh, fulfilling his office and proclaiming, here's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world by leaping in the womb. Uh, so babies can believe because John the Baptist in utero believed. Uh, we also think of Matthew 18 when Jesus says, these little ones who believe in me. Uh, this is why it's so important then. Uh, point number three, for mothers, expectant mothers, to be in the divine service. So the babies can hear this stuff too. Now, science is finally catching up with theology in this area and saying, oh yeah, babies can hear things in utero. They can discern the voice of their mother and father and all that, which is why you have all these expectant parents these days uh, talking to babies who are still in the womb. Babies can hear things in there. And that's how faith has worked. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. So that's why it's so important for expectant mothers to be in the divine service, hearing the word, because it's not only for their sake, it's for their children's sake. The children in the womb are hearing it because faith comes by hearing. And all of this is possible because faith is a gift of God, given through the word, given through the sacraments, not a thing of man. So that covers it uh, if a believing mother um, if a Christian mother who is hearing the word faithfully uh, loses her child in the womb. Uh, we have some experience with that in my house. Uh, whenever you lose children in the womb, it's always a sad thing. But we have no doubt that God is merciful and that those children were hearing the word, that those children, uh, the Holy Spirit created faith in their hearts through the preaching of the word because faith comes by hearing. However, what do you do about uh, the child of unbelieving parents. And this is, I think, where you're originally getting at that. Uh, folks that are, uh, well, folks that are aborted, uh, children that are aborted in the womb. Uh, and that is, you have to pull a Deuteronomy 29, 29, in which the Lord tells Moses, the things that are revealed to you are for you and your children. Uh, the hidden things, though, belong to God. Meaning there are some things that God just doesn't tell us in his word. And the secret things belong to him, and we're not given that sort of information. Uh, however, we know that God is known chiefly in showing mercy and grace to sinners. Uh, so it's a twofold message. Of one, we don't know what happens to babies who die in the womb apart from hearing the word. Uh, 
we pray that God is merciful to them. But the word doesn't tell us that. This should drive home the point, uh, the necessity for all of us to be in church, to be in, in a church that teaches the true gospel, and to be listening to it, hearing it on a regular basis, since, like we said, over and over and over and over again, Romans 10, 17, for the adults, for the elderly, for babies, for babies in utero, and for everyone in between, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's ATP for this week. Send us your questions to atpholycross at gmail.com, and we'll answer them as soon as we are able. See you next time.